Okay, welcome to the module recording for writing compliant IEPs. We are going to be focusing today on the academic and functional skill gaps and how statement. So section 4C and D of the IEP and sometimes E with the developmental. All right, here are the members of our team. Um, Colette Sullivan is our federal programs coordinator. Leora Byrus is one of the special ed consultants on the team, as well as Jennifer Gleason. And Julie Pelletier is our secretary associate. I am Carly Thibodeau. I'm one of the other special ed consultants on the team. And I joined the team in July. Um, I Before that, I was a teacher for 21 years. Here is a link and QR code to sign up for our team newsletter. That will be starting um, at the end of March. We will be sending out a newsletter and it will come out quarterly. So if you would like more information and to get that newsletter, you can use this link to enter your email to get that newsletter emailed to you. Here's a link to the procedural manual. If you don't have um, the, if you haven't used or you don't have the procedural manual, it's a great resource. Um, has all of the special ed forms and um, directions and instructions and examples on how to fill out those forms. So it's a very useful tool. Here's a link to Muser, the Maine Unified Special Ed Regulations, um, for the state of Maine, obviously, and um, goes over all of the rules, including. Um, laws from IDEA as well as Maine. All right, we start off with what is the purpose of an IEP? And IDEA says that the purpose of an IEP is to ensure that all children with disabilities have available to them a free, appropriate public education, or really it's about that fate piece. And um, making sure that they have services that are designed to meet their unique needs. And really, it's about moving them back to general education. So making sure that they have their least restrictive environment and making that move back to general education as much as possible or as soon as possible. The definition of a child with a disability is an individual who has reached the age of three years, hasn't graduated from a secondary school program with a diploma or reached the age of 20 has been observed in the learning environment or classroom setting, has been evaluated according to the rules in MUSER, and um, has been identified with having one or more of those disabilities listed in MUSER. And you notice that it says uh, reach the age of 20 years. Um, we also have an administrative letter that has changed that ending age for special education to 22, but it hasn't gone into statute yet. So this is still, um, the current writing in user, age of 20. Um, a dis these are the disability categories listed out on the IEP, and this is the citation from MUSER where you will find each of those disability category definitions as well as the procedure for determining those. And here is that link to that administrative letter that outlines that change in ending age for special ed eligibility that went from age 20 to age 22. Another uh, citation from Muser that defines adverse effect. Um, adverse means harmful, impeding, obstructing, or detrimental. And so this is really about um, what it means to have a negative impact that is more than a minor or transient hindrance. Um, and this is based on evidence by findings and observations based on data sources and objective assessments with replicable results. Muser also goes, goes on to identify um, what a need is. So they're saying, so Muser says that the need is best established through evidence of a distinctly measurable and persistent gap in the child's educational performance. So a need isn't necessarily like an accommodation or what you're giving or doing for the child. It's really about those distinctly 
measurable and persistent gaps. It's also um, coupled with those gaps is that how statement. You also want to include how the child's disability affects the child's involvement and progress in the general education curriculum. So when we look at evaluations, we use those evaluations to determine those disability identification categories or exceptionality. Um, you'll hear us use the word disability and exceptionality interchangeably. Um, so those work together and you look at both of those pieces to determine the academic and functional developmental skill gaps for the child. And here in this module today, we're going to be focusing on the IEP um, piece of the needs and how. Right here, we're going to start off with the academic needs and how statement, but we'll also be talking about the functional needs and how and touch upon the developmental needs and how sections as well. And this is where you find that academic. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. So this is um, the section four. These are all the pieces of section four. You've got section 4A, which is where you put the results of all the evaluations. Section 4B is where the strengths go. And then section 4C are those um, academic needs and how statement. And then 4D are the uh, functional needs and how statement section. And then 4E is the developmental needs and how statement. And you can see that the red box is around C because we're first going to focus on those academic needs and how. Page 22 of the procedural manual goes over that section 4C of the IEP in pretty um, good detail. They give those directions and instructions and even some examples of what is expected for that section. So we're going to get into some pieces of that. So when you're thinking about academic um, or distinctly measurable and persistent gaps with academics, you're thinking about these broad areas. The broad areas are reading, writing, listening, speaking, and math problem solving. However, when you are thinking about the skills to list in section 4C, you really want to think about more specific skills, and we'll get into that in a moment. But section 4C is about identifying those distinctly measurable and persistent gaps in academic performance and also stating how those deficits have an adverse impact on the child accessing the general education curriculum. So it needs to contain both of those things. And this is just an excerpt from the IEP where you can see it has both of those things listed there. So you need to have both the gaps and the house statement. <clears throat> and when you're listing those specific skill gaps, you wanna be very specific. So do not use broad academic areas or evaluation results or standard scores. So this is where we're going to focus in on those more specific areas within those broad um, academic areas. So you'll notice the words that are underlined are those broad academic areas of reading, writing, listening, speaking, and math problem solving. You want to, in section 4C, you want to pick out the more specific skills that you will be working on um, in goals that will come up in section 5. So when you're thinking about, okay, this kiddo has, uh, you know, deficits with reading, what are those skill-specific deficits within reading that I'm going to write goals around? And some examples are listed here. So for reading, it could be decoding, encoding, fluency, comprehension, sight words, phonemic awareness, vocabulary, et cetera, because this is just a, a limited list. There could be many more to, for you to think about. Along with that distinctly measurable and persistent gap that you've identified, you also need to say how it's affecting the child in the general ed curriculum, either their involvement, their access to, or their progress in the general ed curriculum. So here is an example of the distinctly measurable and persistent gap on the left paired with a how statement on the right. So I'm gonna jump down to the mathematical problem solving. Remember that's that broad area. So they've identified 
a more specific area of addition subtraction that they're going to work on or specific skill. So they've said that Tom's deficits in addition subtraction impacts his ability to participate in grade appropriate math activities. So you can see how they've identified that um, skill gap. And then they've also said how it affects them in the general ed setting. And here are those examples from the previous slide written as a statement in section 4C of the IEP. Now, remember, those other examples were just one for each kiddo. However, you have students that may have more than one skill gap or more than one need in an area. So if that happens, we highly recommend a bulleted list so that you can easily see the skill gaps listed out. Because then you're going to, um, pardon me, you're going to make sure that those align to a goal in section five. So here you can see that this student has needs or measurably persistent skill gaps with reading fluency, spelling, and reading comprehension. And then there's one house statement that encompasses all of those things that says these deficits impact her ability to access and participate in all grade level reading curriculum. So you can have a list of needs or skill gaps in one house statement, or you can write each one with its own house statement, however you like to do that. All right, now we're moving on to functional needs and how, which will sound very familiar to what we just talked about in academic. So here's that section four again, all pieces of it, the, um, the results of evaluations, the strengths, the academic needs and house statement section, the functional and the developmental. But you can see the red box is around 4D, which is what we're going to focus on right now. And this is that functional um, gaps in house statement, that section. And so page 22 and 23, in the procedural manual, go over section 4D in more detail. And so they give you instructions, directions, some examples for this also. And we're going to go over some of those as well. So here are those broad areas of functional. So when you're thinking about things that you would put in that 4D functional section, you would think about those broad areas of cognitive, communicative, motor, adaptive, social, emotional, sensory. So these are really all of those functional needs and kind of related service providers as well. So in section 4D, remember that you're focusing on those distinctly measurable and persistent gaps in functional performance, but you're also including that how statement. And here it is again, the excerpt from the IEP that you need to include, include both the gaps and the how statement. And here, just as with those academic gaps and how statement, when you list out gaps in section 4D for functional, you also need to be very specific. Do not use those broad functional areas. Um, do not use evaluation results or standard scores. So when you're thinking about those broad areas of cognitive, communicative, motor, adaptive, and sensory, you want to dive deeper and figure out, okay, within that broad area of cognitive, um, what do I, what does this child need to work on? What are their um, measurably and persistent gaps? So, or measurable and persistent gaps. And so it may be a gap with problem solving, self-awareness, peer interaction, self-initiation, et cetera. Or if we jump down to motor, um, it may be a fine motor skill that they need to work on or a gross motor or coloring or cutting, walking, stairs, et cetera, whatever it may be but it needs to be a more specific skill within that broad area. And then with that, you also need to um, make your statement about how that skill deficit impacts the child's involvement in, access to, or progress in the general ed curriculum. So here are some examples 
of those distinctly measurable and persistent gaps on the left paired with that house statement for the functional pieces. Um, so you can see that those broad areas are in parentheses and then um, the IEP team has decided these are the more specific skills that they're going to work on. So I'm going to jump down to motor and it says that Michael's fine motor deficits impact his ability to maintain an appropriate grasp on writing tools during writing time. So you've got the measurable and persistent gap, those fine motor deficits paired with that how statement, how it's affecting him in the general ed curriculum. And those same statements that we just saw in the table are here um, and listed how they may look on section 4D of the IEP. And again, just as with academic, if you're thinking about a child that has more than one skill deficit, you can absolutely list them in bulleted form. Because as I said before, whatever skill gap you list here in section four, it should have a one-to-one -one correspondence to a goal in section five. So here I see three skill gaps listed for functional. And so I should go to the functional section of the goals and see three goals there. One for self-regulation, one for expressive language, and one for fine motor. And in section 4D, remember to include that how statement. And this how statement encompasses all of these skill gaps. So it says these deficits impact his ability to engage socially with peers in all grade level activities and to complete grade level activities that require fine motor control. All right, so remember, and I've brought this up a few times, if you've identified specific skill deficits, they must align to present levels, to goals, and to services, okay? So all of the pieces of the IEP are about alignment. So when we're thinking about those academic and functional skill gaps, we are making sure that there's one-to-one -one correspondence to those goals. But that also means that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence to the present levels, because the present level and goal should be aligned to each other as well. So you can see how all of these pieces fit together. All right. Well, thank you for watching um, the module today on academic and functional skill gaps and how statements. Um, if you have any questions, you can use this QR code to visit our website. Um, for links to our contact information. This will bring you to our website where it says meet the team and there's a little information about each one of us and at the bottom there's a link that says contact whoever, contact Carly and you can click that, click that and it will automatically go to an email to me. Um, so you can use that if you have questions please feel free to reach out. Here's a resource page with links to um, other parts of our department. So the first one is our professional development calendar, where you can go to sign up for upcoming uh, professional development. The second one is a link to our previous recordings and PowerPoints. Um, and then the last three are just special ed resources of different variations. So some are about laws and regulations, others are about forms and reporting, but those are links to um, information special ed. Um, last but not least, we have our professional learning feedback and contact hour form. So you can use the link to complete the feedback form from your computer or the QR code again from your mobile device. Um, and there are a few questions about to give us feedback about our professional development. We really do use that. We appreciate any feedback we get and we try to kind of accommodate to it. Um, and then you'll be prompted to select your training. And for today's module, you'll select module and then you'll be prompted to select which module you attended. Um, and you'll select the one that is um, for skill gaps and how, academic and functional skill gaps and how. And then just when you type in your email to receive your contact hour, be careful when typing it in, type it in correctly 
so that it gets to you, the email with your contact certificate. All right, and here is our contact information again, just in case you need our emails. Thank you so much for watching this module.